At the first glance, Nokia's fan lineup can be quite overwhelming. After all, there are already 32 different fans in a 120mm form factor alone. Not even talking about the insane amount of mini technologies that Nokia developed over the years and applied in some other fans. In this video, we will try to make sense of it all. We will take Nokia's mainstream 120mm fan lineup and explain what the differences between them are when to go for what fan, and we will try to answer the question if you really need to stuff your rig full of static pressure focused fans, or if you could go for a very quietly whistling airflow fan. But do keep in mind that this video will solely focus on the mainstream lineup. This means that we will choose to ignore the industrial PPC and Redux lineup, not that they are not equally important, I just wanted to make two videos out of it. For today though, we will solely focus on what Nokia calls their standard lineup and their Chromex black lineup, cause I've now single-handedly decided that Chromex is part of the mainstream. Cause every Chromex fan is essentially just a blacked out version of a regular brown fan without any difference in performance. And because all of my Nokia fans are Chromex black and I, I really needed to use them for b -rooms. Although looking at the whole list of fans can get quite confusing, Nokia's 120mm fan lineup is actually very very simple and can be boiled down to exactly three fans. The airflow focused NF-S12A, the static pressure focused NF-F12 and the all-rounder NF-812. If you look closely at the list, all of these 19 different fans are actually just a variation of one of the three I just mentioned. Let's take the airflow focused NF-S12A. There we have a PVM, a FLX, a Flex, or a ULN version. And putting fancy keywords aside, PVM is the standard, that's the fan which is spinning at the maximum speed, depending on, on the type of fan of course, and this one will also come with a 4-pin PVM plug. So you can connect it to whatever hammer you like on your motherboard and it can be easily controlled using the motherboard software. The FLX, or actually just flexible, is exactly the same fan, however, this one will come with a 3-pin header, and it can also be controlled just via voltage control instead of PVM. The last one would be ULN, Ultra Low Noise. This one is also a 3-pin voltage control fan. However, its max rotation speed is limited to 800 RPM in case of an S12A fan. Something that you might also encounter when going over Nokia fans is that they are providing you with different speeds, like 12 or 900 for the S12A PVM and 12, 9 and 700 for the S12A. This is due to their inclusion of the so-called low noise adapter. This is essentially just like a little PVM extension cable with a tiny whiny resistance in it which just limits the fan's maximum speed. In case of a S12A, it can limit the speed from 1200 down to 900. For a S12A Flex, they can even add two of them. The first one will get it down to 900 and the second one to 700. And in case of an ultra low noise fan, this one is already limited to 800 RPM, so the low noise adapter will push it down even more to 600 at this point. Okay, so to recap all of this part, PVM is the golden standard the max speed with a 4-pin PVM plug. FLX is the exact same thing using a 3-pin plug. And ULN is a low-speed version of the FLX version. Please keep these subversions in mind, cause we will encounter them again and again later on. For the static pressure focus and F12, the lineup is a little bit different. Here again, we have the main PVM version spinning at the max speed and a 4-pin PVM plug. The subversions, however, they are not, I repeat, not made for your PC. For the F12, the subversions are a 5V PVM and a 5V with a 3-pin header. Although these versions are all spinning at the exact same speed as, as the main one, they are made for applications where the header is providing the fan with a 5V current, whereas the header on your motherboard is pushing 12V. A very important difference, and yes, you will fry it. As far as I can tell, these 5 volts are, are meant for very special applications where you don't have a 12 volt header available, like for example a Raspberry Pi. Just, you know, not your PC. P please don't go for those. The last few versions can be found for the Allrounder NF812 fan. Not only will we re encounter the same PVM, FLX, ULN, and 5 volt fans, but we also got two new ones. 
First off, we have the LSPVM, or this low noise, which is essentially like an ULM, but with a 4-pin PVM head. So just slightly slower than the regular PVM version, or PWM, if people really want me to say that. And then we have something very special, the A12X15. You see, until now, every Nokia fan was 25mm thick, and this is the case for 99% of fans out there. That's just the standard. For the A12, however, Noxua reused this fan for a couple of extra applications, like for example some of their low profile coolers. Hence, there is now an army of 25mm thick A12X25 fans and a special A12X15 PVM and A12X15 FLX, which are only 50mm thick. The same rule applies here. However, do keep in mind that these X15 fans are not specifically developed to cool down your case. Of course you can use them, but they will just spin a bit slower and they will push a lot less air. So just use those if you are really unable to go with an X25 fan. As the last special version, we have a new arrival that came out a couple of weeks ago, the A12 X25 R PVM, which is just like the golden A12 X25 by I have here, but with a round frame, hence the R. This one is specifically developed for the NHD12L, but as there will be absolutely no performance difference to a regular A12X25, you can also go with the round design if that is really what you are looking for. So now, with every freaking subversion explained, what is what makes a Noxia fan a Noxia fan? By default, a Noxia fan will come with one of those fancy Noxia style boxes, including of course that light brown and dark brown colored fan with brown rubber pads around the fan for a bit of noise absorption. Included in that box, we will find a whole bunch of little extras like a 30cm long extension cable, a 2 to 1 PVM splitter to make sure you can daisy chain your fans one to the other one, and that low noise adapter we've already covered before. In terms of mounting gear, we will get a pair of regular fan screws and a set of those rubber mountings for some extra noise absorption. Your choice. And this is the standard package that comes with every regular Noxia fan. The only exception for this rule are the special subversions, like the fact that a FLX version will come with two low noise adapters, or that both the ULN and FLX version will come with an ancient to not so ancient adapter included in the box. And on a side note, the cable of each fan is 20mm long, meaning that combined with the 30cm long extension, we are looking at a total of 50cm wire. And that's important because now we will be going over to the Chromex Black version. As I said before, there is a golden standard for each Noxia 120mm fan. We have the NFF12 PVM, the NFS12A PVM, and the NFA12X25 PVM. And possibly also the NFA12X15 PVM if you want to include that one for the coolers. Now for each of those golden gooses, Noxia created a special colored subversion, the so-called Noxia Chromex Black Swap. However, do keep in mind that there will be absolutely no performance difference between a regular colored fan and the blacked out one. Some things may be different, but performance ain't one of them. A Noxia Chromex black fan comes in a quite similar yet not identical fashion, starting off with the fact that swap means that you can really go to swap. Instead of forcing you to go with the brownish rubber dyed pieces, a Chromex black fan allows you to choose one of six colors, black, white, yellow, green, blue or red. But funnily enough, they, they don't include brown for some reason. Another quite big change is how the fan is going to be installed. First of all, here there will be no rubber mounting set included. Here it's screw only. And then there is also the part of the cable. A Chromex black fan will not come with the same 20mm long cable attached to the fan. Here we will just have a very very short 1cm PVM header, extendable with the included 30cm long extension. On a short side note, for the longest time I thought having a 1cm long cable and an extension is, is pretty much the stupidest thing ever. And on basically all of my Noxia reviews, this was the number one complaint. However, as I was informed by Noxia after giving them crap for this again and again, there actually exist Chromex Black color specific extension and splitter cables, which kinda legitimizes that one centimeter plug and makes a heck lot of sense now. I just don't have any to show, 
and I really hope that knocks you against the hint. And the last big difference between a regular Noxia fan and a Chromex Black is the fact that there will be no low noise adapter included in the box. For these, we will go straight to Golden Goose performance with no way of, of breaking our own legs for no apparent reason. And now where we know what the difference between each of those many, many subversions are, let's take a look at what distinguishes a Noxia fan from the competition. If you had a look at Noxia's product line explanation pages before, there is a lot what Noxia has done to make these fans stand out. Let's start with the bearing. For all of the main lineup fans, Noxia uses its own SSO2 bearing or self-stabilizing oil pressure bearing. And as you might have guessed if you aren't that drunk right now, there was a version before that. To not make this a, a bearing explanation video, it's essentially an extended version of a regular oil bearing where the fan blade is not only kept in place on the left and right side by the oil in there, but there's also an additional magnet in the bottom that keeps it tight to the fan frame. And version 2 is essentially just an optimized version that made everything smaller. Which, and I am assuming here, is the reason why the center of a Noctua fan blade part became flat all of the sudden when they started to release the, the new and smaller bearing. The next super duper technology is something they call smooth commutation drive. This is rather small, it's basically an optimization of, of the timing at, at which the, the current switches from one of the coils to the other one. You can imagine it as if, if the rotation speed is small enough, you, you might be able to see the, the switch from one coil to the other in form of, of like a, a very light tick. This produces, well, noise, hence Noctia made sure to do something that they uh, didn't explicitly disclose that makes the transition from one coil to the other one a lot smoother. Usually this isn't like the biggest issue out there, but if you ever had some really cheap Chinese fans, you will see that, that tick. You will st start to see that tick like underneath 20 or 30% PVM. The next feature is finally one that you can actually see, Noxia's AAO frame or Advanced Acoustic Optimization. This is essentially a grouping word for all the little things that Noxia did to the frame to make the whole damn thing quieter. Rubber pads, the, the step in the design, or the, the steps that you can see on the frame, and the little indentations inside the frame are what they mean by that big buzzword. There are individual explanation pages on each of those individual improvements and we could make this a, a two hour video, but to cut it short, all of these things make the air go through the fan a bit smoother and then they slap in the next improvement and a bit smoother and they just try to eliminate any restriction, any, any sudden bends of, of the air which could end up making a, a, any sort of sound and the overall end product is just a little bit quieter. To finally finish off this long list, the last piece of must-have to be called a Noxia fan is a metal bearing shell. Or in other words, the thing that keeps the oil around the shaft is made out of brass. Why brass? Well, it's metal, which means that it's durable, or at least more durable than aluminum, and it's not magnetic, which is kind of good, otherwise the, the, the magnet used on, on the Noxia SSO bearing would make no sense at all and it would just glue itself to the motor which wouldn't yeah be not be particularly great for performance Whew, okay now that we have finally set what makes a noxia fan a noxia fan let's focus on the three golden gooses what exactly is the difference between a nf f12 a nf s12a and a nf a12 x25 and keep in mind that we will be solely focusing on the golden gooses. I don't care about low noise things, three pin header things. We are only looking at max performance, max speed, max PVM version. Starting off with the NFS12A, the airflow focused fan. This one has a very spaced out fan blade design with seven quite short and not very much bent wings. The fan is spinning at max 1200 RPM while pushing around 63 CFM at 1.19 mm of H2O while yielding at 17.8 dB. The NFF12, on the other hand, is the static pressure optimized fan. This one is spinning at up to 1500 RPM while pushing at up to 55 CFM at 2.61 mm of H2O 
and TLing at 22.4 dB. This one is also coming with a 7 wing fan blade design, but this time the wings are way thicker, leaving very little space in between them, but pushing the air way harder. The last of the bunch would be the notorious NF-A12X25. This one is, is very special. Not only is the fan blade design completely different from the last two at 9 blades, which are significantly more bent, but the whole thing is made out of a different material too. Instead of the usual fiberglass reinforced PBT or polybutylene terry polybutylene polu po, polybutyl polu oh man polu polybutylene terry Phthalate. Polybutylene terephthalate. Polybutylene terephthalate. Or how I would call it plastic. Instead of the usual stuff, the blades of a A12X25 are made out of Noctua's own LCP material called Steros. To make it short, LCP or liquid crystal polymers are kind of very high performance capable types of, yeah, let's call it plastic. Using this type of material allowed Noxia to use its, its very useful properties, like for example, high tensile strength. Because LCP is so rigid, it means that the fan blades would not start to expand as much as regular PVT ones would have. Hence, Noxia had the possibility to make the blades longer and make them come closer to the outer frame. And in the end, this means that we have more wing space, hence more cooling power. But in case people wouldn't know this, Nokia made sure to include a weird ass cut on the original colored version. So, you know, to show off that they had to reinforce everything behind the wings, cause the, the damn thing is too powerful. Not, not that the cutout had any positive value, it's just, it's just flex. Coming back to the fan, this little puppy is capable of spinning at up to 2000 RPM while it's pushing around 60 CFM at 2.34 mm of H2O and yelling at 22.6 dB. Looking at all of the fans right next to each other, a clear pattern emerges. The NFS12A is the airflow pushing fan, the NFF12 is the high static pressure radiator heatsink fan and the NFA12X25 is you can, it can push a bit of air, add a bit of pressure. It is the all-rounder thing. And this assumption is due to the general consensus that was generally accepted to be true for the last decade. High static pressure means radiator, high airflow means case. However, as many things in life, it's not that easy. If we take a look at the definition here, Static pressure of a fan is defined as the amount of pressure, usually in millimeters of H2O, that a fan can press against a resistance. Airflow is defined as the volume of air that said fan can move on a unit of time, usually CFM, cubic feet of air, per minute. In case there is any confusion on what millimeters of H2O unit means, it's actually just how many millimeters can a fan lift a predetermined amount of water? It's, it's, it's pressure. The maximum static pressure that a fan could achieve would be whilst blowing inside a completely sealed off box, while the maximum airflow would be a fan that blows air at absolutely zero restrictions. However, neither of those two states are actually achievable in reality. There will always be some sort of restriction, like the frame, the pieces that keep the, the fan in place or your parents' disappointment. And there will never be maximum static pressure as the fan will just stop spinning because it can't move air into this, in, into this sealed box. These two maximum states are usually represented on a scale with a maximum airflow on the x-axis and maximum static pressure on the y-axis. Now what's a bit hard to understand is that no fan has any static pressure inherently. Static pressure is kind of created as more resistance is added. Let's say a random fan can push this amount of airflow when there is absolutely nothing in its way. If we now add some resistance, let's say a dust filter, the amount of air is slightly reduced and there is some amount of static pressure created by the fan. And that's the amount of pressure necessary to get through that filter at the cost of airflow. Now let's add another filter and another one and another one, each time reducing the airflow and creating more static pressure. At some point we will have the amount of resistance that a heatsink creates 
followed by a radiator until we finally come to the point where we try to push air through a concrete wall. If we now take all of these dots and create a line, we will have something called the PQ performance curve, or in other words, how does the fan perform in a real world environment? And this time is really important. Here we can actually read how much air a given fan would push. Let's say a given case has this amount of resistance. Well, the fan would push this amount of air. A radiator, on the other hand, would have a bit more this amount of resistance, hence a lot less air. On a side note, this PQ curve would essentially be 100% of the fan speed. Reducing it would basically just squish the curve against the zero zero point. Now, why am I telling all of this side track? You see, people would assume that for a perfect radiator fan, all you need is the most amount of static pressure. And for a case fan, all you need is the most amount of airflow. But truth is, if you would go for 100% static pressure, you are not moving any air at all. And if you go with pure airflow, the, the freaking Ebola particles in the air would stop your precious air from moving at all. So the actually desired state that you would want to achieve is not actually this, nor is it this. It is this. And this is really, really important because a fan is neither good cause of its great airflow, nor superior cause of its static pressure. It's the combination of both paired with the use case which can make something good or bad. And the best place to be in either case is here. Noctua, the, the good guy as they are, actually provide a highly precise PQ curve for their NF A12 X25, F12 and S12A fans. And as you can see here, although it is true that the F12 is definitely the one capable of creating the highest static pressure, it is also the one that moves the least amount of air if there is none. It, the S12A is the complete opposite. Sure, it can push an insane amount of air, but it has the character strength of a 19-year-old student starting with getting a late-time invitation to get wasted. The one that stands out the most on this scale is the notorious NFA12 X25. It is not the best pusher, nor is it the best blower. But it is the absolute best at everything in between. And if you remember the definition part of static pressure and airflow, neither of these extreme cases are desirable, nor are they even achievable. So you are going for the central part anyway. And that is the part where the NF-A12X25 absolutely dominates. Noxia even made sure to include a radiator, heatsink and PC case resistance line to this graph, so we know who dominates the game where. However, I do not blindly believe spec sheets nor manufacturer created graphs. And we still need to find out which fan is best for which job. Therefore, I did a ridiculous amount of testing. I used a radiator test, a heatsink test, two case tests, additionally to the usual weird ass test that we are doing anyway. All of these tests, including the one on the for Redux Explained, like Arctic Explained and Arctic 2 Explained, yes, because uh, if I'm already bulk producing, I'm, I'm doing a lot of videos at once. All of this created 260 measuring points, each of them taking about 15 minutes to settle. This makes the raw benchmarking preparation section of this whole series 3900 minutes long. That's 65 hours, which is roughly true as my last whole week was just benchmarking. I, I, it would be very kind if you could share this video. 65 hours. Anyway, the first test we did was testing all three fans as a heatsink fan. Here we did the usual noise to performance testing, where on the very right side we have full blast performance and on the very left we have whatever the fan is still capable of pushing but it's just fiddling around. The bottom left side of the graph is the quietest and coldest at the same time. This is the fan she tells you not to worry about, while the paper airplane turbine on the top right is you. After strapping two of each fan in a push-pull configuration on a Noxia NHU12A heatsink, we found that the A12X25 managed to keep the 3900X at 50 degrees C while spinning at 100% of its max speed and at 56 degrees C when the speed is lower to 25%. Quite a bit behind that, we have the Noctua NF F12, which is keeping up a tiny bit until dramatically getting hotter, and the S12A, which does the exact same thing, just a bit hotter. So overall, we see that the NF A12 is just the overall best heatsink fan 
all across the ball, period. Let's now increase the resistance, thus more static pressure, and see how they perform on top of a radiator. Here we can see that, well, that A12X25 is again the best all across the board, with the F12 behind, followed by the S12A. So far, it's 2-0 for the all-rounder fan. The next test would be the case test. For this, we used a Fantex P500A with a Be Quiet Pure Rock strap on top of a 3700X at 3.9 GHz and 1.175 volts V-core. The fan on top of the Pure Rock was said to be spinning at a static 30% of its PVM max speed, while we had two of the Nocti fans installed in the front as intake and one in the back as exhaust. Repeating the same noise to performance comparison revealed that things can also change however not for the A12X25. Again, the all-rounder fan just completely dominated this round. However, unlike before, the S12A actually won at a certain point against the F12. Sure, at the highest speed, the F12 was essentially pumping air into the pure rock just straight through its own fan, but at the lowest speed, the amount of air provided by the S12A managed to win. To make the count, another point for the A12X25, and kind of uncertain for the F12 and S12A in case of a case test. But I was not done with case testing. My problem here was that the P500A is an, ex is an excellent case. It's very meshy, high air flowy, and it doesn't fall apart while looking at it. The problem, however, is what if you don't have a good case? What if you have a real shit show of a case? A box of carton, a concrete wall, which fan should you go for? This is why I came up with this gem of a PC. A 12900K with a Nokia NH212A on top inside the Intertech Thunder. A PC with the airflow characteristics of a kid choking on some good old Italian meatballs. Inside this PC, there is no mesh. No air in that, no nothing. The only way in is through the same hole that you would open the front panel, and the only way out is through the 120mm spot in the back. A true piece of crap. Anyway, while letting the U12 Ace fan barely spin and keeping the CPU at about 170 watts, the NF A12X25 managed to do it again. In front of the competition with the F12A and close behind with the S12A. Unfortunately, Unlike what I expected, I was not able to create a scenario in which the F12 superior static pressure managed to outperform the A12X25. However, this last test is flawed. Completely flawed. As it turns out, by using a case like a Thunder and combining that with way too much heat, I created a scenario in which the tiniest gap in the front panel, and believe me, Nothing in here is particularly straight. I essentially created a scenario in which basically me looking at the case had an impact on the temperature. And I just had to throw off the whole test. When I'm doing benchmarks, I like to do like a little round robin where I restart on the first one after I finish the last one. That's why I'm, I'm kind of sure that the results are correct and that nothing changes in between. However, when closing the circle on, on this test, I got this result. Um, then I was like, okay, something is off, so I re-benchmarked it again with the NF-A12X25, and we had this one. And on the last one, I didn't even, you know, I switched the fan. I just left it in, stopped the benchmark, restarted again, and, and, and what the fuck. I'm not sure if uh, this is due to the, the case pulling air through the USB headers. I have not seen that until now. It's a very interesting uh, effect. But uh, every time I reran the benchmarks, I, I got completely different results, except for without the front panel. If I remove the front panel, I got the same results over and over again. So, I mean, the test is flawed. So yeah, we will unfortunately have to rely on the case tests we know that work. So the A12X25 is still the best case fan inside the, the Fantex P500A and probably generally the best case fan. So as it turned out, that PQ graph that Nokia published is absolutely correct. In a radiator, heatsink and PC case scenario, the A12X25 is the closest to the top right edge Hence, the A12X25 wins in absolutely every category with the F12 close behind it and the only scenario where a S12A takes the second place is at the, at the very low speed while it's using an extremely good case. However, the reason why I started with 
all of this video is cause of a rumor that you can read all across the internet that mixing the Airflow Focus NF-S12A with an NF-A12X25 is generally better. The idea here being that you have an A12, 1 or 2 A12s that can do the pressing part into the case and a S12A can do much better sucking out of the case. Naturally, I wanted to test that. So what I did is pull out the original case that we did the, the case fan benchmarks in, where we tried every fan individually with two in the front and one in the back. On this graph, we can see the CPU temperature on the y-axis and the PVM speed on the x-axis. So left is 0% PVM and right is 100% completely ignoring noise for now. And just like before, we can see that the A12X25 is completely outperforming everything else, also the Airflow Focus S12A. The first mixing test was to leave a A12X25 in the back and use two S12As in the front. And no, as expected, this definitely is not the better option. So what about exhaust? Two A12X25s in the front and one S12A in the back as exhaust. Here, the mixing allowed to match the same performance at 100%, but it immediately lost after that. So now, as for our tests, mixing fans did not create any particularly great results. And I decided not to do any mixings with the NFF12, as during all of my benchmarks, the A12X25 was always the better performer, while the S12A was a bit quieter at a given fan speed under certain circumstances. The F12, however, was, was neither everywhere. To come to some sort of conclusion on, on that when to use what fan question, just like the PQ scale of Nokia showed, the NF-A12X25 is the best fan for absolutely every scenario. No matter if case fan or heatsink fan or radiator fan, the A12X25 is the freaking winner. And I really tried it on the, on the radiator part. I tried to give the fan as much power as possible with a 3900X behind a little NZXT Kraken N22, which is really what, not what you should do, and, and for sure, with the pump running at half speed, at, at, at that point the fan was doing everything. But no, the A12X25 still dominated the static pressure of the F12 is useless. That being said for raw performance, as it turns out, using one S12A in the back actually matches the performance at max speed if you replace the A12 and still leave two of them in the front. And this can save you somewhat around 10 bucks in a worst case scenario. That is a possibility, but a, a fully specced out A12 X25 case will, will just dominate all across the board. The only issue I have with this whole lineup is the F12. The A12 X25 is, is the all-rounder best performer. The S12A is the quietest, and it really is. My DV meter is just, it can't catch noises that silent. But if you put it on a load, three S12As are quieter than three A12 X25s. I mean, those DB comparisons of Nokia are not pulled from their own ass. The F12, on the other hand, I just don't see any use case for that fan. It's not the best radiator fan, it's for sure not the best case fan, so what is it? Well, nothing really, honestly. Maybe if you're trying to cool down a, a floor tile, but within a PC with today's case standards, it's either a A12X25 or it's an S12. But okay, this was my way too long video or an explanation on the Noctua mainstream standard and, and Chromex black lineup. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was helpful to somebody or at least understandable. If you don't mind, please share the video to your local postman, it took freakishly long to create and I would love to see that, that the time was worth on something. Of course, um, there is a video coming in which we will also go over Noxia Redux line and industrial lineup. Uh, thankfully, that one will not be as long as... Uh, most of the stuff was already explained here. Anyway, if you want to hop onto our Discord server and start complaining that an F12 is the superior fan, uh, if you spray paint your case with, I don't know, compressed dust or, or concrete, the links are in the description below. But if starting knife battles is not your thing, have a look at our take on the NF-A12X25. They will go a bit more in-depth on, on the, this particular fan. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Choo-choo-choo-choo, they need to look nice. Choo-choo-choo-choo, they need to look nice.